Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. The other day I took a look at the Stormstrike box set, which is the £25 introductory uh, box set for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. It's super awesome, um, and I highly recommend it. And it represents um, the most cost-effective way, um, aside from downloading the rules for free and proxying the miniatures, this is the most cost-effective way to have a go at Age of Sigmar and see whether it's something that you might enjoy. Um, um, I've got a lot more coverage of, of Stormstrike coming, um, but at the same time as I bought Stormstrike, I bought another product which Games Workshop released um, as another way to sort of introduce people to Age of Sigmar. Because... Um, They've now made four different products for this new second edition of Age of Sigmar. Stormstrike is a £25 introductory set um, with colour-coded push-fit models. Um, and then there is a £50 set called um, uh, Tempest of Souls, um, which has 32 miniatures and loads of other stuff. And it's kind of like a halfway house. Um, and then there is Soul Wars, which is the full box set. Um, which I believe is £95 if you pay full price, um, but you get the hardback rule book um, and 52 miniatures, including two, you know, like a big um, Knight of Shrouds on a horse and a great big Griff Charger, and it's cool. And I've done loads of coverage on Soul Wars already. Um, but yeah, there is a fourth product, and it is another way to learn a little bit more about Age of Sigmar. So, away with you! This is the product. It is Warhammer Age of Sigmar getting started with. Um, and it's basically it's a magazine. And it, I paid £5 in my local game shop. Oh, well, I say local game shop, my local toy shop. They don't really sell. They sell a couple of Games Workshop products and then loads and loads of stuffed toys mainly. Um, so it's £5 retail. You can probably get for less online. And you get uh, a magazine and... Um, a quite well packaged miniature. Now, to the best of my knowledge, come away. It's it's got like a sticky bit. Oh, it's like it's like when I used to get me old Beano's, and they used to have a free squirter gun or something on the cover, and you used to have to carefully prise it off. Um, so yeah, you get a cool little little blister pack to protect your miniature, and this is, to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge. This is an exclusive Stormcast Eternal. Um, um, easy build, um, push fit model. Uh, elderly gentleman with a handlebar moustache and no helmet, which is cool. Um, um, I think this is probably going to be like a Lord Arcanum hero character. Now, before we even look at the magazine, five pounds and you're getting a hero level Stormcast Eternal. Now, hero level characters for Games Workshop products are expensive. Um, they kind of, work, I guess they work on the basis that most people are only going to buy one of each hero, so they're going to sell a smaller quantity of heroes, and therefore the price of those heroes goes up to compensate for the fact they still have to do the sculpting and the mold creation and all that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, it generally works out that a hero can cost you as much as a unit sometimes because you might buy two or three of those units, um, but you're probably only going to buy one hero of each type. So £5 for what I believe to be an exclusive hero, um, that's that's an amazing value. And of course, what that does as well is this is a product that's supposed to be an introduction to Age of Sigma for people who don't know anything about Age of, Age of Sigma and want to learn more. But it also makes this a product that people who play Stormcast armies they're going to drop five pounds for an exclusive Stormcast hero. They're going to do it. So it's just really clever from Games Workshop because they've made a product that is um, something to to help people learn more about the the game. But they've also made a product that people who already play the game are going to want to buy if they have a Stormcast army. Obviously, Stormcast Eternals are the main the main army in Age of Sigmar and um, a lot of people get a bit cheesed off that there's so much of the of the stuff is around is based around the Stormcast Eternal Force but it's going to be their biggest selling army it's going to be the one that most people are collecting especially new people and so that that miniature is, is a great idea um, and to be honest although I was going to do a quick video on this magazine I probably wouldn't have dropped five pounds on it just to do this video if it hadn't been for the fact that miniature was on the front. 
So, getting started with Warhammer Age of Sigmar. This is effectively a magazine that I'm going to guess recycles a bunch of content from um, other the other paperwork from like Stormstrike and Soul Wars. Stop! To build your free... Oh, it's a Knight in Cantor. Oh, so it's not a, um, a, a, an Arcanum. Um, I think there's a Knight in Cantor in Soul Wars. I think that's what the... Uh, there's a, fe a female Stormcast Knight in Cantor. Um, so this is kind of like a male alternative, which is cool. Uh, follow the simple steps below. Once you're ready to paint him, check out the introduction to painting starting on page 60. So here you go, some, some little easy step-by-step -step guides and... And he ends up looking like that. A very cool, dynamic model. I like him a lot. And it's a shame he doesn't have a sculpted base. I'm surprised he doesn't, to be honest. I thought he would have had a sculpted base. But yeah, the magazine itself um, is... Yeah, it's kind of giving you a little bit of background fluff. It's going to talk about the different factions. Factions of order. Groovy artwork. Really love the artwork. Factions of Chaos. Nurgle. Oh, I do love Nurgle stuff. Death. Um, the new Nighthaunt stuff is ace. The new Nighthaunt stuff is really, really good. Um, in terms of the miniatures, probably the best stuff they've done for Age of Sigmar. Certainly, um, for me, it's the best stuff they've done. I absolutely love the Nighthaunt stuff. Factions of Destruction. Basically, Oryx and Ogres. Collecting Citadel miniatures. This talks about where to start. So this is basically, at the end of the day, this magazine is a sales pitch. It's an elevator pitch. Um, it's a magazine that says, this is our hobby. This is what it entails. You can't buy this and start playing Age of Sigmar. You're going to need to buy like Stormstrike for £25 or, or less online. Um, because this isn't giving you the, those materials you need is not giving you the dice and the range. It's just a magazine that says, this is what our hobby's about. Sample armies, Stormcast Eternals, sample armies for Night Haunts. Um, obviously, it's just showing lots of cool painted miniatures and things like that. It's good inspiration. Um, oh, there's... That's the, um, the Encantor from Soul Wars. That's the female one. So that's... Um, it's her male counterpart is on the front of this magazine. So you can have two in your army. Playing the game into the fray. So this just talks about... Um, yeah, playing the game. And this looks like a battle report. Is it so? Um, it's got a battle plan. Battle for the Mausoleum. I don't know if that battle plan um, is specially made for this magazine or not. Um, somebody might be able to tell me, or um, you know, I'd need to go and have a, a route through um, the battle plans in the hardback book to see if that's exclusive or not. It may well be an exclusive battle plan, which gives this magazine a little bit more value for people who um, who already play Age of Sigma or whatever. Um, but this is a battle report so this is just showing you what what you can what you can achieve what can happen if you're if you're playing the game and it looks like it's mainly using um the easy to build models there's, there's a few that aren't um that's an easy to build model in that front there but none of those guys are Do, 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 do. So yeah, it's a cool battle report. Um, and then obviously you've got the Tempest of Souls. Tempest of Souls is the mid-range box. It's um, uh, it, it gives you a chunk of the miniatures from the full Soul Wars box, but not all of them. It doesn't give you like the Griff Charger and the big horsey and things like that. Um, it's a really good way to... It, it works as an introduction. Um, but it's also a really good way to build your army if you don't mind having a lot of repetition in your forces. Um, you know, if you want another bunch of the, the same sort of guys that you've already got, um, it's a good way of doing it. Um, I don't intend to buy Tempest of Souls. I've bought Soul Wars, um, and I've done a lot of content on that. And I've bought Stormstrike, which, I'm, which I think is just a fantastic product. Um, anybody who saw my video on Stormstrike will know that I think it's amazing. And talking of amazing, here is Lady Olander, which is just 
an incredible miniature. I'm, I don't know how much she costs, but um, I should imagine it's quite a bit. But it's absolutely fantastic. Look at the, look at the roses and things. She's got roses twisted around her. And there's roses all over them and, and thorns all over the base, and it's really really cool. And then you've got the two um, like harpy type, not harpies, um, banshees, on either side of her with the one with a tome, or is, that, or is that a chest? One with a chest and one with a, a cracked hourglass. It's just, it's a really, really beautiful miniature. Um, and this is just talking about all the different stuff, start collecting sets. So again, it's, it's, it's mainly an elevator pitch. Uh, the realms and the bastions of hope. Um, come on! Uh, talking about the different realms. Where's my favourite realm? This is my favourite realm. Grr, the realm of beasts. Grr. It's like Chamon is the realm of metal. Uh, makes me laugh. Um, Citadel so Mention Showcase. Um, this is mainly, it actually looks like this is all, oh, well, no, it's not. Um, those miniatures are mainly from Soul Wars. That, that Griff Charger is from Soul Wars. Um, the archer isn't the, the guy with the crazy bow launcher isn't um that is the knight of shrouds from soul wars which is my favorite miniature to date from games workshop i just think they've done an absolutely amazing job of capturing that sort of sense of fluid motion the dynamic pose it's super cool um and yeah that that's from soul wars soul wars soul wars, soul wars. um these are not um, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Painting miniatures. Now, um, the uh, Stormstrike starter set had a section on painting miniatures, so I'm expecting. I was expecting it to be the same, and it's not. It's not. But this does look like it might be the same as. Um, this isn't the first time Games Workshop have made one of these getting started with Warhammer Age of Sigma magazines. They've done one before. Um, I did. I, I did purchase the last one as well because it had a Stormcast on the front, but it was just like a regular Stormcast. It wasn't an exciting one. Um, and I think that could well be um, pretty much the same the same painting guide. Or actually, this, this does look very similar to the one, to the stuff from the Stormstrike box set, looking at it. Yeah. So it goes through different different stages of painting and teaches you how to do stuff. Um, painting sequitors, painting castigators. Yeah, this is this is yeah, this is all the same stuff. This is the same stuff that's in the Stormstrike uh, starter book, um, showing you how to paint those models that come with the Stormstrike set. So this is this is um, useful in its own right, um, but it's a lot of duplicated content. Um, so if you end up getting Stormstrike, you're going to find that a lot of this stuff is duplicated. But, um, oh, look, and then you get the core rules. Um, again, the core, the core rules are available um, for, for free for download. And that's interesting. They've got a different, um, different layer. I was expecting it to look exactly the same as the core rules that you get in Stormstrike or Soul Wars. But it's not. It's got a different layer. It's sort of more spread out and it's got like this great big, chart and things um and it cut yes yeah, so it's a slightly different layout it's got it's got more box outs and things like that um and and things that sort of tie in units with certain rules interesting that's that's going the extra mile that's uh, to to have laid it out differently and to have presented those rules in a slightly different format cool um Wizards and Triumphs. Uh, a bit on terrain. This is a really cool, cool piece of terrain. And um, and then the battle plan, the first blood battle plan, which turns up in every everything, because first blood is the one that they suggest you sort of play with your as your first game. It gets gets you started in the universe. And then a bit about war scrolls. And that's it. So it, it's. It really is just kind of like it's it's the elevator pitch for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. It's the thing that says, "This is our hobby. This is what we do. This is you know, all the stuff that's available to you." Have a flick through here. Do you like Nurgle? Do you like Nighthaunts? Do you like Stormcast? 
these are different ways that you can get into the game, these are different things you can buy. Oh, by the way, painting's a thing. Have some instruction on doing some basic painting. Um, and, oh, here you go, here's the rules as well. That's pretty cool. Um, if you didn't have like extra copies of the core rules or whatever, having them in a, in a magazine is a bit more useful than having them in like a big hardback book. But if you buy Storm Strike or Soul Wars, then you get those get a, a set of the core rules anyway. So um, it's a really cool thing to if you're interested. But you know, if you if you've looked at Storm Strike at, for twenty five pounds on, on the shelf in the in the toy store, and you've gone. Ooh, I don't know if I want to spend 25 quid on that. Um, you know, maybe pick up this um, because it, it gives you that sort of step-by-step -step guide to what, what you can expect from the hobby. Um, but in all honesty, I think if you've got that far that you've spent five quid on this, you, know, you might as well spend another 20 and get the Storm Strike set, which has got most of the same content um, as as this in terms of the background of the universe. Um, Stormstrike is a little bit more focused in the, in the fact that it talks more about the the night haunts and the stormcast than the uh, than the realms in in their entirety. I mean, this this actually covers a, a, probably a little bit more of the general history of things. Um, although I haven't done a, a, a blow by blow comparison, so it may not be that different. Um, but for people who want an extra stormcast hero. You can't go wrong for five pounds um, to, to have that extra Stormcast hero, especially as, to the best of my knowledge, um, I do not think he is available anywhere else. At least not at this moment. He may be later on. I don't think it's. I don't think they've used the term exclusive anywhere. Um, they've actually used the term here, uh, free Stormcast Eternal. I, I'd be more inclined to say it's a it's a Stormcast Eternal with a free magazine. Um, I don't think it's said. When did, where, where did it have that? It said stop. Yeah, it just says free night encounter. It doesn't say it's exclusive or anything. Um, and it, you know, But maybe it is. Um, I certainly haven't seen it anywhere else. And that makes this a good value anyway. Um, it's, it's, it's impressive. It's, it's, another, it's a cool way, another cool way to sort of find out more about the hobby. Um, and, and, and a cool way to get a hero. And I don't think I've got anything else to say about that. Um... I'm going to go back to Stormstrike. I've got miniatures to build, I've got more video to shoot, um, and I've certainly got a lot of miniatures to paint. Um, I don't have time to keep chatting about this stuff. Um, bye, everybody. Bye-bye.